Welcome to St. Bernadette Catholic Church. We are glad you are here. And to all who are visiting or returning, we extend a special welcome. We are not complete without each and every one of you. As we begin Mass, let us pause a moment and greet one another warmly with a smile. Today we celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. The intentions for today's Mass are as follows. Father Don is offering the Mass for the parish, and Father Rich for the repose of the soul of Daniel Lamans. The Mass intention scheduled for the repose of the soul of Helen Reed will be fulfilled by one of our priests in a private Mass. Today's second collection is for the Catholic Communications Campaign. We are grateful for your generosity. Our opening song is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise and can be found on the liturgy sheet, which you can download from our parish website announcements page. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times nor seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God 
God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, what she worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. says the Lord, I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus asked them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When I was growing up and I would hear words like baptized with the Holy Spirit, well, they call Missouri the Bible Belt of the Midwest. And so that was always something that seemed a little bit Protestant to me. Have you been baptized in the Spirit? 
Well, as Catholics, we would say, of course, we've been baptized with the Spirit, by water and the Holy Spirit, at the time that we were baptized. Well, this last instruction of Jesus to go and baptize all nations as his last word to his apostles and disciples is very significant. As children, we learned in catechism that the baptism, the baptism comes with five different attributes or five different parts, gifts. We become a son or a daughter of God, the Father. The gates of heaven are open to us, the gift of salvation. We become a member of the church. Our sins are forgiven. And then the most important one of these is that we become temples or tabernacles of the Holy Spirit. These are all things that we learn as children, but we don't really understand what that means until we have life experience as adults or as older people and also feedback from others who are able to recognize in us how these gifts have taken root. So as we study the charisms, the gifts of the Spirit that come to us from baptism, we need to recognize that these are not confused with the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit received at confirmation, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. But there are other gifts. Those are the seven gifts that are given for us to develop ourselves in the spiritual life. But we are baptized disciples, and the gifts that we are given in baptism are for, to be used for the sake of the church. Having all of these gifts, if we do nothing to actively further the mission of Christ, then they have been wasted on us. Does that mean that they are inactivated? No, it just means that they were never activated. They're still there. St. Paul, in this reading, talks about how God gives gifts to the body of Christ as, as apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers. In other words, he gives gifts of leadership and guidance and creativity and prophecy and um, administration and that kind of desire to share the knowledge that we have. All of these different jobs, or roles in the church, all these different charisms, are all carried by servants. We are all servants because the purpose of all of this is to serve to build up the body of Christ. Well, next weekend we will be able to begin coming back together as a church in the, in the Mass that we will celebrate in the, uh, on, su- on Saturday evening and Sunday. So we can kind of see the worship reawakening, but it seems perhaps that ministry is still on hold because that requires a kind of personal activity. But today I want to ask you, is it on hold? Because we know that the first church is the home, the domestic church, it's up to to families to discuss the gifts that they find among each other. What gifts has God given to the different members of the family to contribute to the common life that we share? Perhaps you have a gift of of humility, or you have a gift of helps, you want to help people, or you have a gift of generosity. All of these different gifts can be found among even small groups, not that we see the full, the full plenitude of the many gifts that build up the church and make the church ministry complete, but certainly on a smaller level in our homes, we can ask one another, what gifts do you have? I asked somebody one time, because we were doing the called and gifted program in the parish, and, I, and they asked me if they thought that they should enroll. And I said, well, I, I don't know. What gifts do you have? And she said to me, I don't have any. And I said, well, I think that there needs to be some discovery, so definitely enroll in the program. How is God calling you to activate your charisms to build up your home church? So finally, I want to say that the mission of Jesus, if you think about it, The mission of Jesus, which came from the Father through the Holy Spirit, was passed to us while he was on the cross. And many of us may feel like that's where we are right now, on the cross. But as we embrace this mission that Jesus gives to us from his Father, he passes it down, almost our inheritance, you must be confident in your gifts by baptism preserving the unity of the Spirit with humility and patience through the bond of peace. And one of the ways that we pray for an awareness and a deepening of those gifts 
is by the novena that we're praying right now in the parish. It started on last Friday, Friday, Saturday. So Sunday is day three. These prayers are all in the uh, announcements page of the parish website. We have an audio that you can pray along with, and we also have the text there that you can look at on the screen. These were prayers established by Pope Leo XIII in the late 1800s. This was the first formal novena that was based on those nine days after Jesus ascended into heaven until nine days from now when we will celebrate Pentecost next Sunday. These prayers were largely ignored in the late 1800s, but they were picked up by a bunch of Protestant groups um, around 1918, 1919, when suddenly the charismatic renewal was begun uh, as a result of these, these very prayers. And then later in the Catholic Church, it happened again in the 60s that the, the renewal was born. So that this language that we have about being baptized by water and baptized in the Holy Spirit becomes a living reality of what we have received and how we have embraced it to make it a part of the fabric of our own lives in action so that we might build up this body of Christ, this body of Christ which also exists in our domestic churches in your homes. Now let us stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That all members of the, oh, confident in the love and faithfulness of the Father, let us turn to him with our petitions. That all members of the church may find genuine hope in the glory to which we are called as members of Jesus' body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our leaders of the world will acknowledge that Christ is the true sovereign and reigns over all, so that all laws will bear witness to his truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are alone or in desperate situations are able to shine their light of hope into our many homes affected by the pandemic. For those who have suffered illness or loss, or lost their jobs, that they may know the love and support, care and concern of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an end to violence, hate, and religious persecution throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans who have served our country, even to giving their own lives, and for those serving in the military and public service today, that all might be instruments of peace and security. And for those who have returned home, that they may know our deep gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead who have believed that all things are brought to life in Christ, especially Martha O'Brien, Alfred Amida, and William McCarran, that they may rejoice forever in heaven with Christ, who has gone before to prepare a place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the, chairs, the prayers of your humble church and answer them if it be your will. May we be strengthened on this day to do your will and to give you praise so that we might reign with you one day in your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly estate, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. <clears throat> in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O 
Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have some announcements. Our parish staff members will be observing the Memorial Day holiday on Monday, May 25th. We will be available to receive your calls again on Tuesday, the 26th. You probably have heard plans are in progress to welcome you back to St. Bernadette next weekend. Please remember the dispensation for attending Mass remains in effect indefinitely. Our Saturday 5 p.m. Mass will be in person in the church as before, and we will continue with live streaming at 5.30 p.m. to provide continued access for those who cannot or are not yet comfortable attending Mass in person. Our Mass schedule for Sunday will change from 7 a.m. 10, change to 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m. in Spanish, and 5 p.m. to allow for enough time for your arrival, mass, and departure, followed by a thorough cleaning of the church and ba bathroom facilities by our cleaning company. In order for our reopening to be effective, efficient, and safe, a minimum of two porters and four ushers are needed for each mass. If we are unable to staff a mass with the minimum number of volunteers, the Mass will be canceled. You will find a complete overview of our plans in my letter and an instructional, vid instructional video will be available on Sunday on the announcements page of the website. Daily Masses will begin on Monday, June 1st. Our Novena to the Holy Spirit began on Friday, May 22nd, and we're praying the Novena prayers every day. You'll find the text of the prayers on pages 12 and 13 in the, today's bulletin as well as the parish website's announcements page where we also have audio recordings of the prayers. Finally, we ask you to please consider our Catholic school. We invite you to, vir to visit our virtual open house at our school Facebook page. If you would like to see what we can do for your child, you are welcome to call our St. Bernadette School office to learn more. Registration is open for all classes, and we hope to see you soon. I find it kind of fascinating that we're reopening on Pentecost, right? The day that the, the apostles had all been kind of locked inside and then the Holy Spirit came and the doors were thrown open and they went out. And I, I find that as kind of a beautiful, kind of hopeful message for us for next week. So we look forward to seeing you. Just be safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Go make of all disciples, we hear the call, O Lord, that comes from you, our Father. Inspire our ways of learning through earnest, fervent prayer, and let our daily living reveal you everywhere. Go make of all disciples, baptizing in the name of Father, Son, and Spirit, from age to age the same. We call each new disciple to follow you, O Lord, redeeming soul and body by water and the word. Go make of all disciples we at your feet would stay until each life's vocation shows forth your holy way. We cultivate the nature God plants in every heart, revealing in our witness the master teacher's art. Go make of all disciples Welcome your command. Lo, I am with you always. We take your guiding hand. The task
us glooms large before us, we follow without fear. In heaven and earth your power shall bring God's kingdom here.